Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. podcast uh, i am mike and i'm rusty and uh rusty i think um while doing another podcast with each other we uh we decided that this was our true calling yeah yeah, yeah. uh to re-watch every episode of king of the hill and comment on it right i think it was my calling from birth actually yeah <laughs> before the show's inception <laughs> I, I was born and destined to re-watch king of the hill yeah some things find us and we find some things i think that uh you are a little bit of both there no, absolutely so uh mike judge uh creator of king of the hill and greg daniels um a man of many shows Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. A guy that, uh, uh, I mean, once you do King of the Hill and The Office, you can pretty much hang up your hat and ride off into the sunset. Oh, easily. Yeah. And yeah. Then even even Mike Judge, you know, his body of work, you know. Well, that's true. Just, he could have rode off into the sunset with Beavis and Butthead Does America and then been, you know, yeah. he would have been revered forever just yeah. from that. Yeah. And then he goes on to do stuff like um, Silicon Valley and, and uh, my favorite movie of all time, Office Space and Idiocracy. Yeah, and absolutely. Things like that. Yeah, prolific. Just a super funny guy. You know, <laughs> there's another show that he did that I don't think he gets enough credit for. It's Mike Judge's Tales from the Tour Bus. Oh, you ever okay. seen that? No, I've never seen that. That's, that's, that's a new one to it's me. It's on Showtime, and basically it's about uh, different bands or different singers, oh, and yeah. he just tells like these tales of well, Yeah, well, he did. He like was he, a musician. He, he did, did the, do a lot of touring in Austin with different bands and stuff. Oh, there you a, go. He was a bass player and stuff. Oh, See, I so, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah he was a uh, uh, ba- bass. I don't, yeah. I don't know what kind of music they were playing. I imagine yeah. it was probably rockabilly, country, probably, probably something, something like close that. to that. You know, yeah. rock, southern rock, something maybe. He uh, um, basically tells the stories behind the scenes from all these different, like Billy Joe Shaver, and he talks about the where he shot a guy outside of um, Uncle Joe's or whatever that place is around here. Oh yeah, Billy yeah. Joe Shaver, yeah. Yeah, 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 out in Lorena or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a really good show. Uh, the first first season was country music legends, and then the second season was like uh, you don't have to watch that. I like music. I'm I'm really into music. Second so season was like R and B and funk. It was yeah, it's really good. Mike hope, Judge and R and B and funk. Yeah, yeah that's got to be it's, good. It's yeah. all animated, but Mike Joe Judge hosts it as yeah. an animated Mike Judge. Okay, so it's it's very nice. Yeah, it's crazy him even being in animation to me coming from his background because he has a uh, uh, bachelor of science and physics and stuff. And he even worked in the field for a little bit. Really? And uh, so he's got a, a degree from university of uh, California, San Diego. Huh. And that's what he was doing was just different stuff in the, in the physics world. I'm not sure exactly what, but he was doing yeah. different stuff with that degree in that, in that uh, colliders. Uh, and things. Yeah. Well uh, he actually, it was now I do, I do remember a little bit. It was a, uh, early video card production company that he was working for. Video card production. Yeah, and he absolutely hated it. <laughs> so he only worked there for about six or seven months, and I think that's when he segued to Austin, mm-hmm. or he might have already been in Austin. It might be an early Austin company. I'm not really sure. So, yeah, they're like segues. To, somehow he ends up in Austin if he's not already there. And uh, he starts doing, uh, like I said, music, playing bass and stuff, like doing stuff with different bands and things like that. Mm-hmm. And then he's in this theater, 
and he walks past and sees uh, an animation cell just on the wall. Oh. And he was like, well, that's kind of cool. <laughs> so that's when he takes it upon himself to go and buy this 16 millimeter Bolex camera. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how he started in animation is yeah. just walking through a movie theater and saw a cell on the wall. It was is like, his, well, is cool. his first one the one with the guy dancing, the little black and white thing of him just kind of dancing? I think so. I think that I saw that recently. The first one. It's just like, I don't, I don't remember what the name of it is, but it's, it's a, just a guy kind of standing there barely dancing, right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And he did, he did every frame and everything. He was talking about animation, and um, he talks about how most people think it's very laborious, you know, and, and – uh, he said that he enjoys it because you can see how things change and, you know, you're just, just there with yourself and, and stuff like that. So that seems like, seems like something. Yeah, absolutely. And then, it, and then if you look at him too, he gets like a crash course in it. So if you look at like the shorts for, uh, the Milton shorts, mm -hmm. which is where you get office space right, from, right. which, uh, through all this, I thought was kind of cool. Cause you kind of find his connection to SNL Saturday night live. Sure. Cause Saturday night live, after MTV already has it on Liquid Television, uh -huh. they they air three of his shorts. Oh, really? Yeah, it was like uh, ninety. It was they, they aired one of them in ninety three, and then two of them in ninety four. I can't remember which this shows was, they were. This was MTV cashing in on anything that Mike Judge could do because of Beavis, Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I imagine at this time, Beavis and Butthead ninety three, ninety four is pretty good, popular wise. You know, it's, it's pretty up there. So they, I imagine it was you know. Com not, uh, Comedy Central or MTV yeah. selling the it's definitely MTV. Selling the I don't shorts, think Comedy MTV. Central was even around at that point. I think it was still Ha. Oh, it was still Ha like, at this point. Originally, yeah, it was just called the Ha. Oh, network, okay. Because I know eventually uh, Saturday Night Live picks up the Office Space stuff, uh -huh. and then they, they do the three episodes, and then I think uh, Saturday Comedy Night Live Central picks up the, Office Space. Saturday Night Live showed the Milton stuff. Yeah, they showed three three shorts. Huh. It was just three on, like I said, between it was uh, one episode a night, a ninety three, like the, two and ninety four. Kind of like the uh, the the TV Funhouse stuff or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just to give them a showcase, you know what I mean? Just showcase gotcha. his talent, and I guess huh. I guess uh, Lauren liked it enough. But also, there's a uh, a cool connection with Greg Daniels. Yeah. Okay. And you know the Saturday Night Live Lauren thing too, because yeah. that's where he actually. Uh, 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 he starts with Conan O'Brien at the Harvard Lampoon, oh. and then Conan and him go to Lauren together, and that's where they get there. That's their first break is you know, with Saturday Night Live. You know, I've heard Conan talk about that, about those two moving to town together and being roommates and stuff. Yeah, they went to Harvard, yeah. so him and Greg Daniels were at Harvard together. Huh. Uh, they were comedy writers for the Harvard Lampoon together. Uh, they leave Harvard together, which is which uh, ultimately known as National Lampoon. Yeah, National Lampoon. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So they leave together. Uh, when they leave together, they go to Saturday Night Live together. They do Saturday Night Live together. Well, Greg leaves first. And they're both writers. Yeah, they're both this. writers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Greg leaves first and goes to The Simpsons. Oh. Well, you know, follow suit. Conan follows him, and he goes too. So yeah. that's where they yeah. all. That's that's literally their end of their togetherness is the Simpsons. Because after right. that, Conan obviously goes to the late night stuff, right, right. and then Greg goes to TV show creation uh, from there. Yeah. So uh, that's when Greg leaves the Simpsons, and then boom, he goes to work on King of the Hill with Mike Judge. So back to Mike Judge. So yeah. he does the Office Space stuff uh -huh. and all the shorts. Well, he. Uh, develops in 92 what you showed me was the frog baseball right so he develops that in 92 and that's where you first see Beavis Beavis and Butthead. And Butthead, yeah so. yeah uh, frog baseball is is that that little short that I saw at the Dobie in Austin one time and uh, it was part of a spike and Mike's twisted animation festival it was is my first uh, I guess the world's first exposure to Beavis and Butthead yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we are we're kind of caught up with uh, what got these guys here and who these guys are for the most part. Mm -hmm. So, uh, being that this is uh, episode one, I guess we start with uh, the pilot. Uh, yep. Episode one uh, of season one aired January twelfth, nineteen ninety seven. The pilot. Yep. Yeah, uh, and and that marks the debut of. Almost everybody that you see in this series, the, with the, the hills. exception of like Lucky and folks like that, the the hills and then the the satellite friends. Yeah, you you you, uh, they were going to add the Laotian family. So the first episode was supposed to be uh, where you meet the Sufanusan phones. Yeah, 
but they didn't think that was a great way to introduce like the characters by sure, adding sure. adding characters in while they're introducing characters they didn't think would be a good idea. So they went ahead and left that for a later episode. But yeah, so yeah, you get your yeah, you get when, your core base like people you, that you see in every episode. When you look at the number of characters that are in this, I mean, there's, it's it's basically the 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 stable. You know, the the ones that are always there. Uh, Hank, Peggy, Bobby, Luann, Dale, uh, Nancy, Joseph, uh, uh, Boomhauer. It, it's, I never knew that Boomhauer's first name was Jeff, but uh, Boomhauer. Nobody does. You don't find that out until that very last episode when he yeah. sets his ID on the. Yeah. Bill um, Buckley, which uh, is one of my favorites. Uh, John Redcorn, Cotton. Um, and then uh, Luann's parents are just kind of mentioned. Um, and then, of course, Anthony Page, who nobody knows who that is. <laughs> yeah, nobody knows who that is. <laughs> so Quick boy. here's my yeah, here's my first uh, my. Uh, so when you start watching this thing, um, number one, I will say, uh, and this this kind of goes throughout season one and two. Hank is way more angry than he is later in years. Yeah, yeah, he does show he does show a little bit more anger, but but I mean, like he, gets, was, he gets like beat red. Yeah, at one yeah, point, beat like, red, like beat very red, very angry. But just like that, I don't want to talk about later episode episodes that are further out. But even sure. even in further out episodes, it's always due to somebody else's oh sure stupidity yeah. or lack of common sense. Yeah, it's common sense yeah. thing always. So yeah. so he's he's never he's never just pissed off to be pissed off at the world. He's never no. just sitting there mad. It's not like Hank gets yeah. up on the wrong side of the bed or anything. No, I, I feel like Hank wakes up every morning and he's just you know, ecstatic to go deal with propane and, you know, pet ladybird and <laughs> he loves propane. Love his boy. The man loves propane. And we do find out in this episode that he sells propane and propane accessories. That's the first time that it's mentioned. So, uh, when this show opens up, uh, and, and, you know, it's coming from, uh, someone who's watched the series and I know you've watched it through many, many times. Uh, but, uh, I have as well. And, you know, later in in seasons, you don't get any kind of intro or beginning before the credits just come up. You know, the the, the main credit screen. On this one, you get introduced to basically the town. Uh, so there's like a, a wide shot of the whole town, and you're following a mosquito uh, that ultimately lands on Hank's neck, and he swats it away. And then you see that Hank and his friends are all around Hank's truck talking about what's wrong with it. Yeah, I really like that mosquito, uh, the mosquito kind of introduction because it kind of reminds me of uh, it reminds me of Forrest Gump with the uh, the, the the how the, oh, the yeah. feather floats yeah. in. You kind of see get like a long, long shot of the the town that they're that he's sitting in on that park bench. That's true. I didn't but even it, think about but that. But it makes yeah. me feel like uh, we're the mosquito for the rest of the season for the rest of the show. Mm. So we're like the fly on the wall watching you know these people's everyday average lives you just, so we're you that just little kinda, buzzing mosquito on hank's neck for 13 seasons you just kind of blew up my brain there i didn't <laughs> i didn't thought about well, that. well that's what that's i was thinking about because well, awesome. I've, I've not yeah. only watched the pilot episode now a yeah. hundred times yeah. after watching the show a hundred times but uh -huh. i've watched it a hundred times this week kind of thing <laughs> i played it on repeat for like an hour just so i get a good feel and hear if, all the uh, dialogue because you miss nuances and stuff and i did i missed a lot of stuff like thinking about the mosquito that way i would have never thought about that when when I first watched the show as a kid, but if somebody could call a qualified psychiatrist, we could probably use one. Yeah, probably. I, I probably need one at this point. Yeah. So uh, one thing that I didn't mention is the the intro music and and you know the fast animation up front. Um, uh, that is a band uh, playing the intro music called uh, the Refreshments. Mm -hmm. um, they have an album that I am a huge fan of. Um, this song up front, you said you had, you had a little info on it. Yeah. So, uh, they were at a concert, mm -hmm. uh, I imagine somewhere in Texas and they screamed out to the audience or something like that. They're like, well, uh, we're going to record something or we want to do something for right. this TV show kind of thing. So right. just hoot and holler whenever we start <laughs> banging on these, uh, these triangles and stuff like yeah. that. So the audience started hooting and hollering. Yeah. Well, they send the the tape to Fox and Fox was like, Oh, that's it. Boom. Wow. Flew him out, put him in a studio, <laughs> recorded it in the studio and that's polished crazy. it. Crazy. And I don't know where they get the yell from yeah. now, but yeah. the original yell for the original recording was from the audience at the concert that they were at. That's where they get the original idea for it from. They are a very um 
I mean, they're they're a rock band, but but they're very like country leaning type rock band. You know, okay. they they've got some good stuff. Kind of like a southern rock. Yeah. yeah, and you know the thing that you and I have talked about before is is the intro music. It's not the same on every episode. No, it's not. Sometimes no. it's got the scream. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't think this one has the triangles. Oh, at this the, one at the beginning. Oh, at the very beginning, they don't have anything. They just yeah. have uh, a guitar riff, and then, like you said, they do the pan yeah. shot, and then you're the mosquito, and then yeah. you and you land on on Hank's neck. So that's that's all the refreshments information you'd ever want to have. Uh, but there's uh, there's there's that you know sometimes it has the scream, sometimes it has the triangles, sometimes it has both. Uh, this one just goes straight into the music, and then it's got the scream and the you know all that kind of stuff in it. Yeah, and we don't have the uh, trash can gag at this point either. Like the we, we don't get the where they're standing out in the road yet. Oh either. yeah, you're right. You know how they do the little fast yeah. animation deal yeah. at the intro. So the first episode, you don't get any of that. Mm. You don't get the. The hooting and hollering. You don't get the. I don't think you get the refreshments theme until the very end, really. Huh. So when you're first watching it, it, like I said, it's just the the the, the fly in introduction. Yeah. And then you have the riff, which I imagine is from the intro song, but you sure. don't have the full, you know, feel for the intro that you get later on. Right. Which makes me think that uh, it is the pilot, you know, of course. So. They hadn't really had it all. They weren't expecting to get picked up for thirteen no, seasons. No, this is this is just a salvo to see if anybody because it was only twelve to, episodes for the first season. Then yeah. you get twenty four for the next one. Yeah. So it was like most shows, you're going to get your little your little trial period, which ended up being ridiculously successful. Yeah, so. it was. It was. So uh, uh, the the one thing we do get is uh, our first yups. Uh, instead of being in the, instead of being yeah. in the uh, alley though, we get it around the truck. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Bill actually has the first line of dialogue. First dialogue. Yep. yep. That's yep. about it. Yep. <laughs> and it goes around. Yep. 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 Everybody says, yep. Except for Boomhauer. Except for Boomhauer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Boom he always says the, mm -hmm. <laughs> Boomhauer has a, mm -hmm. <laughs> now talking about, talking about these characters, the voices are very different. Um, in these first few episodes, uh, than you get later on down the road. Yeah, you you could tell that uh, Fox didn't go all out for production, ex no. you know, voice production, and yeah. and even on the animation, it's it's not uh, as clean and crisp as you get even in the second season. Right, right. Uh, yeah, it's and you were telling me earlier that that. Uh, the first seven, I think you said, are all hand drawn. Yeah, the first seven seasons are hand drawn. So first seven seasons. Yeah, first oh. seven seasons, not oh, seven wow. episodes. The first seven episodes. seasons for seven years. Holy yeah, because you got to think the show was only made in ninety seven. So yeah. Yeah. you still had hand drawn animation oh, sure in ninety seven. Yeah. The majority yeah. of animation was still hand drawn, unless it was like major movie productions and stuff. Right. Like TV shows are still drawn by hand in two thousand seven. So uh, uh, the other thing about the voices is uh, Boomhauer, not nearly as confusing as the Boomhauer no, we get later. No, he wasn't nearly as confusing, and there was less uh, less fillers because when he's talking later on, he does a lot of filler. You know, you know, dangle, dangle, dangle. Yeah, there's you know, a, lot of dangles, a lot of that, yeah. a lot of that filler, right. which he <laughs> right. he had more direct dialogue, like when he was, you know, discussing Seinfeld, and it's a whole show about nothing. <laughs> New York boys, a whole show about nothing. Show about nothing. Yeah. Which, um, which the cool thing about his voice and where the development of it comes from. Yeah. Uh, Mike Judge got a voicemail from something to do with Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. And it was some guy just talking. Just pissed off rant, about Beavis and Butthead. Pissed off, right. mad about sure. it. Yeah. And that's where he got Boomhauer's voice from. He said that the guy was just talking so damn fast he could barely oh, that's barely awesome. make out what he was saying. And he was like, this would be an awesome, you know, awesome character. You, you feel like Mike Judge pulls a lot from actual reality, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. In yeah. all of his stuff. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like a lot of reality Well, stuff. I mean, if you look at idiosyncrasy and then look at reality nowadays and look how, like, you could compare a lot of, like isms and stuff like that that oh, we're sure. dealing with today to yeah. that whole that whole movie yeah i, I always think of the uh, kfc bowls you know where they just pile everything in there <laughs> yeah. i think of that as the bucket that they're eating out <laughs> yeah, of the idiocracy. Bucket. yeah yeah <laughs> um okay so the first thing we get is hank coming into bobby's room bobby's listening to his walkman which which is that's that's definitely an old old tech throwback for you there yeah uh and he's like uh bobby what you listening to and Bob, bobby says oh i don't think you'd like it yeah, and then he hands him the he hands him the headset or whatever, and it's just fart sounds, which is uh, it's the funny phone jerks. Yeah, the funny phone jerks. <laughs> it's just fart sounds and stuff, which is which. Uh, there is a comedy group that did 
phone stuff called the jerk. Yeah, jerky boys. Jerky boy. Yeah. The jerky boys. Yeah. They say that might That's be what loosely was. what yeah, the, om- the homage is there. Well, so. it's like later on you get celery head, you know, yeah, instead celery of carrot head, top. Yeah, yeah, carrot top, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's... Uh, uh, I never thought about that until he, you mentioned that. He goes, Hank goes, <laughs> the people on this tape have a medical condition. <laughs> yeah, he said that's not Medical humor. disorder. That's a medical disorder, yeah. <laughs> So he tells Bobby, we, we you got to get ready for the game because apparently Bobby's going to go play baseball, which Bobby does not seem like the athletically gifted type. No, that's also uh, yeah. another name that the title goes by is uh, uh, Bobby the Baseball Phenom. Ah. So that's another, that was another, uh, so uh, I think it's on the DVDs. So really? if you look on the DVDs, it doesn't say pilot. It says Bobby the Baseball, Bobby the baseball Phenom. phenom. Um, then uh, we get we get the family in the car. So we've got Hank and we got Peggy and we got Bobby in the back seat. And uh, Hank is telling him he's got to play hard. He's got to he's got to get ready to kick some butt. Yeah, and they. Uh, he goes, uh, should I play? Should I should I play one hundred and ten percent? Or no, yeah. was it, uh, he goes, you got to give one hundred and ten percent. Yeah, and then uh, he goes, well, what about one hundred and eleven? What if the other What if the other team gives one hundred? Yeah, one hundred and ten. And then he, well, what about one hundred and ten? One hundred and twelve? And then goes one hundred and thirteen. And then Peggy was like, oh well, thirteen's an unlucky uh, no, number. Thirteen's unlucky. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. Just give one hundred and ten percent. Just play your best. Yeah, he gets really frustrated there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and so we go, we go to the game, and uh, Bobby's up to bat, and both of them are screaming for Bobby to watch the ball and hit the ball. Uh, yeah, the whole time he's keep your eye on the ball. Keep your eye on the ball. Oh, but even what? before that, that what killed me is he's he's at the he's at the uh, at the uh, at the bat mound or whatever, yeah. and he's talking with his dad yeah. at bat, and he, he looks at him and he's like. Uh, Oh man, what does he say? How are you gonna get on base if you yeah, don't swing how, at the ball? Yeah, how are you gonna get on base if you don't swing at the ball? Yeah. And he said, "Well, what if he hits me or something? What, what if, if he, he walks? What if he walks me? me? What if he walks me? Yeah. We're not trying to play lawyer. Quit trying to play <laughs> quit, lawyer quit ball. Playing lawyer ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I love so it. Bobby ends up getting hit by a ball. Uh, Line in, drive right in the eye. eye. Yeah, after <laughs> after he gets walked, he ends up getting hit in the eye with a ball. Uh, so Bobby's got a shiner now. Uh, the next thing we see is that uh, Bobby and Hank are headed over to Megalomart. This is our first exposure to Megalomart. Yeah, Megalomart, man, the big Megalomart. So we get uh, we get a couple introductions here. We get uh, the Megalomart. Uh, we get the fact that Hank hates the Megalomart because he's saying that under his breath. He tells Bobby he's got to stop in and get a tap and die and some WD-40, which if you don't live in Texas – and uh, maybe WD-40 is not national. I, I'm assuming it is, but around here, it's duct tape, and WD-40, WD-40 fixes just about everything. And if you don't know what a tap and die is, <laughs> go to Home Depot and go ask. Go ask Buckley at Home yeah, Depot. Yeah, go ask Buckley. Yeah, so our first, our first introduction to Buckley, uh, who comes to a, a terrible end at, at a certain point. <laughs> but, yeah, terrible, terrible end. Buckley's in, in the Megalomart. He's, he's an employee there with his big red vest, and uh, Hank comes up to him and asks him where, the, where to get a tap and die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that, Buck- that's my – actually, this is this – is, <laughs> Probably my favorite scene from season one, yeah, and maybe even the entirety of the show is the the Hank Hill losing his patience, asking this kid what a tap and die like. Where's <laughs> well, if you don't know where a tap and die is, he said. Well, what if I needed a hammer? He said, you know where a damn hammer is? Where can I find a hammer? Which it reminds me of like my dad. Like going to a Home Depot or something with my dad, oh, it's sure. like I know more than you. Yeah, and yeah he yeah. just like walks past them. Yeah. And they're like, "Hey, uh, do you, well, can you find? No, I, I know where I gotta go." Kind of thing. So that's what Hank Hill kind of reminds me of. He has this like infinite knowledge of like handyman type stuff. Yeah. So when he goes into the store, he knows more than this guy, but he's lost the hardware store. There's no <laughs> mom and pop hardware store that he probably went to for years. Yeah. Now it's Megalomart. Yeah. So well, we get a little of that later in later yeah, seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where it's, it's crushing all those little businesses. Yeah. But for some reason, Bobby is allowed to bring his baseball bat into the Megalomart, which which is a little odd. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> they is might question weird. that today. Uh, but Bobby starts swinging his bat, and he ends up knocking over a bunch of motor oil, and Buckley says, you're going to have to pay for that. And then Hank kind of loses it and, and yells at the kid about being fired. You're fired. He basically fires him. Yeah, and then leaves. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing, I, the thing I found weird about that is um, – He's overheard by uh, two ladies that are in the Megalomart, 
and they're like, oh my gosh, that's that Hank Hill. You know, he really has a temper. Yeah, and then and you no, get to hear... Uh, no telling how that boy got that black eye. I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but the lady that does uh, Peggy's uh, Namji, is that how you say it? Uh, Najimi. Najimi. Yeah. So you hear her voice there, too. Yeah. Because it almost sounds like Peggy talking. Well, I think they have about three people in this show yeah, that do all the, the time, voices, probably, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, they didn't have very many... Vo- uh, they just had the core voice acting at this yeah. point for all the main characters. I'm, su- I'm surprised that Stephen Root and... and uh, uh, Mike Judge just didn't do all the voices. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you, you see those two talking, and then it, it goes to gas pumps where another couple of women in town are talking about Hank Hill's temper. Yeah. That is something that you never see again. No, you never see anything like that again. No. No, there's no, like, there's not really ever dialogue any, from anybody in the neighborhood yeah, or there, anything. Well, and the thing is, there's not really any scenes where it doesn't include one of the characters you know. Yeah, like this is this is two scenes with four people that you never, never see seen again, and will never see again. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And you never see that happen again. Right, where you get unnamed, unknown yeah. elements like nothing that I can remember. Well, watching it now, the way we're watching it, we'll probably be wrong. But <laughs> from what I can recall of the show, I don't really remember another time where you get non-named characters having an impact on like driving the story. Yeah, because they do drive the plot because. They're right there, and then they're like, well, somebody needs to report them. And then, boom, you switch to Twig Boy with his wrist brace on, putting right. in all the information right. in the computer. Right. You got you got Twig Boy, who is in Child Protective Services, getting a phone call about uh, that because of this, this game of telephone that people around town are playing, uh, Hank Hill has now hit his son in the eye with a bat. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, no, that is not acceptable. Not That's at all. Not acceptable behavior. Uh, I've got him in the system. I- I'll take care of it from here. And he's wearing one of those, uh, I always call him a bowling glove, but it's like for uh, uh, corporal tunnel syndrome. Yeah, like a wrist brace corporal or whatever. tunnel syndrome. Yeah. yeah. He takes that off. And then like you were saying. Yeah, when he lifts up the little folder with like three pieces of paper, and he goes, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and then you hear Mike Judge's, it's almost a ball. That's right. But it's yeah. very high but pitched. Oh. Yeah, it's like yeah. a Californian ball. <laughs> That's right. It's a yeah. California ball. <laughs> Um, so we, we now go to, uh, Hank and Dale, uh, and they're talking about, uh, they end up talking about global warming, which you and I have talked about this before, how this show was way ahead of its time in talking about global warming, uh, transgender, all kinds of stuff. Oh, I mean, yeah, there's all kinds tons of stuff. of stuff in here that could easily have pegged Hank as like a MAGA guy or a, you know, a, a far right wing Republican or whatever, but Hank ends up being a centrist throughout this whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the thing is, is, uh, his biggest, uh, the biggest thing about Hank Hill is common sense. Yes. So he takes a common sense approach to everything in his life. Yes. And politics is one of the things he takes a common sense approach to. Well, it's hot outside. It shouldn't be this hot outside. If it gets one degree hotter, Dale, I'm going to kick your ass. If it gets one degree hotter, I'm going to kick your ass. All right. So uh, one of the other two things that, uh, that I brought up to you is uh, in this, this episode, we get the first two instances of Dale Gribble running away. Yeah. So they're working on the truck. And Hank's cussing pretty much at you know him yeah. and uh, well him he and keeps Boomer. hearing the ball inside too yeah, bouncing yeah. off the and wall he's, yeah he's frustrated with the truck uh-huh. he's frustrated with the lack of common sense and his buddies that are supposed to be helping him fix uh-huh. the truck and then he's frustrated because he can't discipline his son and stuff like that he said oh no no we haven't we hadn't gotten yet. that yeah, yet no that it's yet. just Bobby inside bouncing Throwing a the ball off against the wall, wall. Yeah, yeah he yeah, doesn't yeah, know yeah. what that sound is he's trying to figure out what that sound is which I didn't understand uh, why he would be throwing a baseball against a wall inside of a inside of your home anyway well peggy comes up and says okay you need to go outside now you've been inside long enough watching tv and then yeah. some guy starts crying on tv and she just lets it all go she goes, all oh go, that yeah. poor man that poor man yeah <laughs> like she forgets yeah but yeah uh dale is trying to help and he uh screws up uh, hank's truck ends up backing it into his garage door which we never see fixed or whatever yeah never see it but dale just like okay i gotta go and he <laughs> jumps over the fence that's the first yeah, time he jumps over the fence and then the second time hank is is actually trying to fix the truck and he's hearing the bouncing off the wall and all that stuff and yeah 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 dale basically helps close the hood on hank and beat him up and all this stuff and then he just like eh, and jumps over the fence, jumps over the fence again. again yeah that's right that's right so uh 
then um, Hank is 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 basically uh, reached his tipping point. You know, he's he's pretty pissed off at this point. Oh, and before that happens, Bobby ends up hitting his mother with the ball in the head. Yeah, it bounces and he hits her. In the yeah, floor it was it. just a complete a fluke kind of thing. You know, it hits her and then gets her a big lump on the head. But that's when we get uh, a visit from CPS. Yep, you get the visit from uh, Twig character, Boy. Yeah, Twig Boy, eventually known as Anthony Pay. But yeah, Twig Boy is where you get him and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he comes in, sits down, and he starts doing, like, the interview or whatever with the family. Yeah. And then eventually he goes throughout the neighborhood asking everybody about sure. it. And even Dale has good stuff to say about Hank, yeah. which is kind of weird because uh, later on you have situations where people are asking stuff about Hank and Dale, like, slanders him. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The worst best friend to have Dale is Dale kills Dale his Dribble, front yard, yeah, everything. All kinds of stuff. So this is the first mention in this interview of uh, uh, Hank's narrow urethra. Yeah, which uh, Hank is not proud of, and uh, uh, asked Peggy to not mention his glands. <laughs> yeah, and then also that's where uh, Hank gets mad, and he's, he says, "Now you listen to me, Mister. I work for a living, that's right. and I mean real work, not writing down gobbledygook. It's, I provide the community with propane and <laughs> propane accessories." That's yeah. right. You get a lot of information out of that one little speech where Hank is getting so pissed off. Yeah, he gets and, pissed off at bureaucracy too. He starts because uh, that's pretty much what he says. He's like, "My hard-earned tax dollars go to pay for Twig Boy and the bureaucracy." And yeah. as he's getting a little loud, of course, Twig Boy says, "Mr. Hill, loud is not allowed." <laughs> And that really pisses off. Yeah. Loud, loud is not allowed. Why you? you? <laughs> and that's when he kind of goes into his tirade. In the middle of it, uh, this is another very Texas thing that happens here. He says, Peggy, get me my BC headache powder. Yeah. Honey, get me some BC headache powder. Yeah. <laughs> you never hear BC headache powder out of anybody but 80-year-olds. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's fantastic. So uh, as, the, uh, <clears throat> as the interview... Uh, the interview guy goes around uh, the the neighborhood. He ends up over at uh, Dale's house, mm-hmm. and he's interviewing Dale. And of course, Dale's like, "Oh no, he'd never hit his boy. You know, he's he's very proud of him, and that's all he's got because of his narrow urethra." So he brings it up again. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, he goes, "If you don't believe me, believe my son. He's his best friend." He calls in, um, uh, uh, Joseph. Joseph. God, I don't know. I couldn't think of it. All I could think of was John. Uh, he calls in Joseph, and that's the first time we see that Joseph is basically John. Well, that's Red. all Nancy can think about is yeah. John. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he says, uh, he says, hey, Nancy, bring us a couple of beers. And she goes, sorry, Kane, hon, I got a migraine treatment with John Redcorn. Yeah, then they're standing right at the door. He's yeah. running out. He says, uh, he says, you've been going to that John Redcorn for 12 years. And she yeah. says, well, healing takes time. Yeah, healing <laughs> takes time, baby. And or it's honey. John John Redcorn. It's always Shug. Yeah, uh, Shug. John yeah. Red Red corn out in his Jeep playing uh, foreigner hot blooded as she goes out and whisks <laughs> away with him. And then you see Joseph and you realize, oh crap, Joseph is <laughs> Joseph John Redcorn. Yeah, John Redcorn. Yeah. That's right. So you're getting, you get like the, on the information about these characters is like with a fire hose at this point. Yeah. Because it's just, it, yeah. oh my God, it's all this information. You get a lot of information. And then, and then like we were talking about, uh, well, Greg Daniels' influence on the show, you get uh, like the conspiracy theorist nut yeah. that Dale is. Yeah. Dale at first was supposed to be just a toothless, slack-jawed redneck. Really? Yeah, he's supposed to just be. I mean, that's what uh, pretty much everybody around Hank was supposed to be yeah. before Greg came in. So you had Boom Hauer, you had uh, Bill, mm-hmm. and those are the only two that existed at that time. And he, well, you had Dale as well, but they existed as just satellites redneck satellites that weren't even really supposed to as strongly developed as greg helps with so greg takes that that experience from writing with saturday night live and fleshing out characters there and then he went to the simpsons and fleshed out characters there and if you look at his influence on the simpsons uh uh, back in the early early season of the simpsons there was always a a morality to the end of every episode sure which it loses eventually that you lose that in the simpsons Yeah, yeah but there was always some kind of like Message, which you get in King of the you Hill. You never lose that in King of the Hill. It's, you never it's lose always it. there. It's yeah. always there, and that's because yeah. Greg Daniels never leaves The Simpsons. Yeah, and, and, or King of the Hill. King sorry, the Hill. he stays yeah, yeah, yeah. in King of the Hill in perpetuity um, till the end. The the other, and you know, um, sorry, a little side on Greg Daniels, yeah. but um, I know that The Office was based on the UK Office, but there's got to be a little bit of Dale in uh, Dwight. 
Oh, absolutely. You know, that absolutely. those two characters, he is kind of the the the, 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 the nut. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah he's the, the far the yeah. far out there nut yeah. for sure. I wouldn't even call him far right. He's just far nut. So yeah. so Twig Boy goes and interviews um uh Boomhauer and Boomhauer tells him all about dogs barking. He thinks yeah. he's there to take care of the dogs that are barking in yeah. the neighborhood. Uh but uh, eventually Twig Boy is walking out of the uh, out of the neighborhood, and Bobby and Joseph are in, uh, I guess, Bobby's backyard, and they're talking about Hank and how mad he got, you know. And he says, Bobby says something like, "Oh, my dad loves me. He he should have heard what he said to that Twig Boy. He said." Get out of my house. My boy ain't much, but he's all I got. And that's not even what he said. That's what's so funny. He didn't even say that at he's all. He's all I got. <laughs> yeah, that's and funny. So, and so uh, Twig Boy overhears this and overhears what Joseph said, and he's like, oh, my God, i got to take this kid away. You know, he thinks he has to put him in CBS because yeah. because yeah, well, he's I could put you him. in a house in a nice house in North Arlen. Right. Yeah. He comes back with him, asking, asking him if he wants to be put in a nice house. State so damn nice, they gave it one star. So. As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy, available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. You won't compete with all of the websites on the internet, but it's safe to assume there's significant competition. Are you confident your e-commerce site will stand out? Increase your chances of success and leverage the Brilliance User Experience team to make specific revenue-generating improvements. For a limited time, get a free two-minute UX consultation at go.brilliancewebcom slash UX consult. That's go.brilliancewebcom slash UX consult. Uh, let's see. Well, to touch on Arlen a little bit, so the cool thing about that is... Uh, it's actually based on a suburb of Dallas. Yeah. So Garland or Arlen sounds like Garland, and uh -huh. uh, I want to say uh, that's a, a area that Mike Judge lived in was around the Garland area. Mm -hmm. But uh, he actually based it on Richardson, Texas. That's actually really? where Arlen is based on, huh. like the the neighborhoods and stuff like that. So if you if and and true, like I I could see. Uh, even in even in our area where we're at, yeah. uh, Mike, I could yeah. I could see these neighborhoods. Like, oh, you yeah. could drive, you know, two you know two three minutes up the street and see oh, these neighborhoods. One hundred percent. Yeah, this is this is uh, it's a very Texas show. Uh, if you're not from Texas, it that's what kind of amazes me about how it became you know this this sensation uh, and how it went on for 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 as long as it did. Uh, you would think it would be very Texas oriented as far as watchers yeah. and stuff goes. Well. Mike Judge builds the, the the skeleton, but without Greg Daniels fleshing it out, yeah, know, sure, it wouldn't because 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 one of the research methods that Greg uses even for the office and Parks and Recreation and stuff like that, he makes people go, he makes his writers go, like, yeah. hey, you go and check out what it looks like to be in a you know local government for yeah. for Parks and Rec, or hey, you go sit in an office space and. I've got a guy that's going to let you go and observe, you that's know, amazing. an office kind yeah. of thing. So that's what I think is really, really neat about King of the Hill and how, how they actually went to the neighborhoods and kind of went and f sat in like cafes and these little, you know, areas and walked these streets and stuff to get all this like research for these shows to to make it feel so intimate. It feels like people you know, like we've discussed. It feels before. familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Very like, familiar. Like any neighborhood that you've ever been in kind of thing. So talking about uh, how we're getting fed from a fire hose here, uh, the other thing we get is uh, the backstory for Luann, uh, why she's at Hank's house and, and all that, because she is his niece. Uh, she says that Mama's back in jail because she was saving a quart of beer, and then Daddy went after her with a fork, and the trailer turned over. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the so funny thing is that, the the trailer the trailer humor goes so far that they even get into a fight so bad that the trailer itself yeah. actually yeah. falls over. <laughs> and and the the cool thing is we get a callback on that way down the line. 
as far as the trailer turning over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because years later, the trailer is still... Still tipped over, and <laughs> Hank and them go to tip, they go to tip it back over to put That's her right. in it. That's a tornado That's episode. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> we get that. We get uh, Twig Boy showing up and, and trying to convince Bobby to come with him. Hank yells at him again, and then he chases him off. Uh, and again, this is Lady Bird uh, barking at uh, at somebody which which is a weird occurrence because you only get that like three times in the whole series yeah, Lady she Bird's doesn't, usually she doesn't just, bark at him yeah, yeah. And, and we find out later on that she only barks at things that make hank uncomfortable yes yes like, very much so like california bureaucrats <laughs> or repair guys <laughs> that's right yeah that's right so uh we we kind of fast forward a little bit to uh bobby taking advantage of the situation a uh, phone call well first we see in the cps office the the uh the supervisor and twig boy sitting together they're having a meeting about this and he says and, and twig boy says well uh you know he got hit with a baseball and the first thing yeah. that guy says is well did you talk to so-and-so yeah the and little goes, league coach the little well he said well who's that the little league coach yeah and he's like gulp he does that big gulp yeah. well no uh yeah i didn't and then that's when that guy picks up the phone and <laughs> he said bobby conveniently answers it and he, he says, says where are you from again yeah where are you from again la la yeah yeah la i like how he says la la, LA. <laughs> but then he, he he calls he calls the hill house uh does the supervisor and says okay the whole thing's called off uh the <laughs> twig boy's going back to la we're sending him back to the la office and uh bobby uses this information to his advantage. Yeah, it takes advantage of that situation for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, Peggy and Hank come in. They ask him who was on the phone. He goes, oh, it was the wrong number. And then Bobby decides he's just going to go all out and be a complete twerp. Oh, and he and like he doesn't just off. go all out. He goes like <laughs> like at one point he's sitting in the driveway with a stop sign and a drill. Yeah, like he yeah. broke a stop sign off and he's sitting in the driveway just drilling he into and, it. He and uh, uh, Joseph are are they're moving a uh, extension cord for Hank, and uh, he gets the the garage door opener and he's playing with it. You know, up down, up down, up down. He's pissing off Hank, and he says to Hank. Your hostility invalidates our parent-child contract. <laughs> yeah. That, and, there, yes. and I got to tell you, there is no better way to piss off Hank Hill than for his son to say, your hostility invalidates our parent-child contract. But that's the funny thing about all that hostility <laughs> and stuff like that is that's the reason why Hank has so many internal issues that yeah. we see develop sure. is because of his relationship with his father and how strained it oh, is. Yeah. So, like, we learn so much about, like... Because there's even an episode where Hank can't even shoot a gun. Yeah. But he's like this Texan, so it's like yeah. this super like taboo oh, yeah. thing that he can't shoot a gun. But it's all cotton. But it's cotton all cotton. Good. Yeah, so. he, he, he's talking to Peggy at this point, and he talks about how... Um, well, actually, no, no. First, what happens is uh, you see um, uh, Bobby just kind of going nuts, doing all this stuff, and Hank trying to not get pissed off at him because there's people walking around and they're overhearing it and things like that. Because Hank, at this point, doesn't realize that the investigation has been called off. Yeah, no, nobody knows at this point. Yeah, right. Peggy doesn't even know at this point. I, I will say there, there are two things that happen in this time that, that I really got a kick out of. One is Hank making a bacon and bacon grease sandwich, which is fantastic. That's he, Southern. He bypasses the mayonnaise and just uses grease That's instead Southern. on yeah, white no, bread. Bacon grease on bread? No, it's love just, it. It's just yeah. white bread, bacon grease, and bacon. You That's don't do the that? whole sandwich. You've never done that? Man, I don't know that I've ever put bacon grease on, on well, bread. Well, next time you make some bacon, you got and it. even if you don't put the bacon grease on the bread, just dip it in the bacon grease and eat the bread. I'm going to yeah, go ahead awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and get my tombstone ready. And get it I'll, ready. And then yeah. I'll eat some of that. Uh, yeah, that'll be great. Get a heart surgeon on standby. <laughs> and then Luann comes in and says, Uncle Hank, I went in to use your truck this morning. It wouldn't start, so I uh, it was a clogged fuel pump. I went ahead and fixed it. So this is where we get um, Luann may be smart and just in a dumb package. Yeah, well, I think it is. It, it uh, it's almost a joke that she's good yeah. at working on cars yeah. because she's from a trailer park. Yeah, she's from this uh, trashier side of the the platter family. Yeah, there's there's a great quote coming uh, a season or two later 
about trailer parks and stuff, and I, I'll I'll wait to to. to oh, the trailer say park it. humor, like the whenever they do explore the trailer park humor, especially when Lucky comes <laughs> in, and you get a lot more of it when Lucky comes in. You, Lucky's a whole different. I know Lucky's a whole different That's thing. Whole yeah, different he's a whole thing. different thing. He's funny though. And God bless Tom Pl- Tom Petty. Uh, okay, so as Bobby's going uh, going nuts and pissing Hank off, we hear the second refreshment song. Uh, this pilot came out in 1997. Uh, Refreshments had a song called Down Together off of an album that came out in 1996. And uh, it just made me very happy to hear this thing playing in the background. Yeah, see, I didn't see it. You, you know that band, so you were able to yeah. pull that out. Yeah. I never even heard that. Like, I just thought it was just uh, yeah. the Refreshments just doing doing we, a little whatever just, in the studio. I didn't know it was an actual song of an album that came out a year before the show. Well, they don't even play the whole song, and so it's it's uh, it's almost like uh, just background music. They just yeah. pick something off just an album and, riffs, hey, let's use yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but here is where Peggy finds out that uh, she gets another phone call from the, uh, from the CPS office, making sure she got the original information, so yeah. she confronts Bobby. And Bobby says, well, um, I've been doing this because I don't know if dad loves me. I can, I can make him love me even when I screw up this way. And so that becomes a big deal. And Peggy goes to Hank and says, hey, listen, you know, I don't think Bobby thinks you love him. And so that's why he's doing all this stuff. And that's when Hank uh, has the flashback to the cotton incident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... Uh... Uh, yeah, Peggy comes up, tells him you can relax. The investigation's been off for a week, right? And I'll kill him. Right. That's like the first thing he says. Well, she says, she yeah. says, she says, you, "Do you love him?" He goes, "Of course, I love him." He, she goes, "Well, the investigation's off." Well, I'll kill him. <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's, just, it's within he a breath. Says, it's hard, Peggy. I don't want to lose my little boy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. My that's only right. son. Yeah, and so uh, she convinces Hank to go out and talk to Bobby, and tell him that he loves him. And uh, Hank comes out, Bobby. I, I always love the scenes where they're sitting on the patio furniture, like, you know, through the sliding glass door. Yeah, you know, yeah, Hank's yeah. cooking something or whatever. A lot happens right there in that backyard. Yeah, between Bobby and Hank. There's a lot of Bob, Bobby and Hank development in the backyard. It's where Bobby smokes all his cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, they <laughs> but, start smoking cigarettes together, yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, Bobby is sitting at the, at the patio furniture, Hank comes out and he's stammering and hemming and hawing. And, and you know, the one thing I noticed is Hank's not wearing any shoes, which no, is weird not, for Hank. Which is weird for Hank. Yeah, he's in his sock feet, which is which is really odd. Which, which uh, the funny thing to me is uh, how hard it is for Hank to even show emotion to his oh, son. Oh, yeah. Like he literally is, uh, he goes... Uh, Whenever he's trying to talk to him, he's like, oh, well, uh, oh, he makes a oh, weird almost, noise. It's he almost makes like a weird ask- noise. And he goes, hell, that's a weird sound. I never made that before. <laughs> it's almost he like he's himself. asking out a girl on a date or something. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's, it's just so uncomfortable So for hard. And then he says, you know, damn it, boy, I love you. Or something, you know, something like that, right? And Bobby's damn like, it, you're my boy. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. He goes, <laughs> punch he goes, him in the shoulder. <laughs> damn it, you're my boy. He goes, you're not, you're not uh, embarrassed by me? Damn it, you're my boy. Yeah. <laughs> Punches him. You're in not the a shoulder. disappointment. You make me proud. Yeah. And then that's funny because right after you see Hank kind of like slug him a little bit, just playing around, you see the bus go by. Yeah. And there's Twig Boy sitting there. Twig Boy's he's on the bus. He's sitting next to this big old country guy with a <laughs> hay straw in his mouth. And yeah. he goes, Did you just see him punch him? I knew I was right. What are, you, uh, what are you talking about, Twig what Boy? What are you talking about, Twig Boy? <laughs> yeah. And then scene. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. It's a yeah. great episode. Great episode. Great way to introduce all the characters and everything. Um, the one thing I did want to talk about here at the end is uh, you see this, um, and, and later later episodes, it, it, they flesh it out a little bit more, but you see the, the title card come up at the end after the credits. And there's three production companies, Deedle D Productions, uh, Judgmental Films, and Three Arts Entertainment. Um, and then at, later on you, you have selected quotes from the show or whatever that play whenever you see this card. Like yeah. They'll Dale. have like the 20, like right before the 20th century Fox sound or yeah. whatever you have, yeah. like some Dale's random saying quote. something. Yeah. Or yeah. Whatever. But, uh, just to kind of cover these things, uh, Deedle D, uh, is Greg Daniels, uh, production company. Okay. And Greg did, uh, of course, the office parks and rec, um, uh, he he does a show currently on Amazon called Upload, which I was not a huge fan not of. Huge fan. Uh, and then he also is producing Space Force for Netflix with uh, Steve Carell. Steve Carell, 
I wasn't a huge fan of that either. Still not a great show. Um, yeah. There is one scene in Space Horse that makes me When I first watched it, it was laugh. pretty funny. The first episode was funny, and I thought it was a good uh, a good premise or whatever. But, I mean, it's hard to recapture. I, I will say, though, there is one part of one episode that, that harkens back to Office, King of the Hill, everything. Yeah. It's when they send that monkey into space, and the monkey ends up eating the dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's, yeah. that's fantastic. That is fantastic. That is pretty. The funny. monkey eats, eats the, the dog, dog, and then the monkey is just like flipping around and flying yeah, everywhere. Yeah. That's that's one of the that best. One. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Deedle D is uh, is Greg Daniels. Judgmental Films is Mike Judges, and of course uh, we've kind of talked about him. But uh, uh, Beavis and Butthead, Silicon Valley, which Silicon Valley is a fantastic live action show, uh, and then Tales from the Tour Bus, uh, amongst uh, many, many other things. Of course, Office Space and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. And then you get to Three Arts Entertainment, and Three Arts is is a bona fide production company because they have produced an enormous amount of stuff. And so you have to... You so have, they're probably like the big production house that Fox uses for whatever. That's what I'm saying. Well, Three Arts has done movies and TV. Oh, and so they've done other oh, stuff. they've done so much. But are they attached to Fox, though, for all the stuff you're talking about? Is it all Fox think, Productions? No, 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 no. no. It's, it's all over it's the It's all place. over the board. Okay. Yeah, but what I'm thinking, and this is just me thinking this, but I'm, yeah. I'm assuming that Three Arts was the actual production company on this, and this is where Deedle D and... Um, judgmental films get their start basically they yeah. become production companies because they're helping you know do produce the show it's kind of like smart. somebody it's kind of like somebody being an executive producer the first time or something like that well kind of like know? like the david letterman stuff on the other podcast yep. uh, you know how how all that kind of starts yeah so um it, it's a it's a wonderful episode it's a great uh uh intro to this whole thing yeah uh i, I had a couple of cool things to add here yeah please too. do so uh, you have a director on this show uh, the, 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 for the pilot. Uh, first, I'll talk about the pilot. So whenever they pitched this show, the pilot wasn't the pitch. The pitch was a pencil-drawn test, which is a pencil test of Hank selling himself. Oh, yeah. So what I think is so neat, the, like the, oh, what, geez, how gonna, they sold I'm the show. i watch that. Yeah, uh, I, I have the link. I'll send it to you. Yeah. So uh, the pencil test is Hank Hill selling himself to the Fox executives to tell them why he would make a great sure. character for a show, which I thought was so ingenuitive. Like usually the way I see somebody pitching something to uh, uh, a company to create a show is, is, Oh, well we have, here's a full script. Sure. Uh, here's the, there might be a presentation, a presentation, the whole thing, yeah. maybe even a reading with people that you've already got like secured for the show kind of thing, maybe even a live reading form or something. But I would never ever think that to pitch an animated show, they would use the animated character to pitch itself to his own show. Well, another fun fact on that, uh, we go to the direction of the show. There's a guy named Wes Archer who ends up being the, yeah. uh, supervising director for the show from 97 to 2009. He leaves for a little bit to go try something else, but he comes right back like after a season and he's pretty much with him for the rest of the show all the way through that point. But, uh, the cool thing about him is, is he starts off, uh, he was with the Simpsons for like seven seasons and yeah. then he goes on to do a little bit of Futurama. And then of course he's, he's with King of the Hill. But the cool thing about him really is, uh, he 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 does Bob's Burger, Rick and Morty. Like yeah. right now, he's like the consulting uh, uh, or supervising director for the Rick and Morty show or whatever. Yeah. So I really thought it was neat that uh, again this web of comedy that we keep discussing uh, over all these podcasts we're doing and how intertwined everybody really is. Like you know, like even the SNL connections where Mike Judge even has a connection to SNL and yeah. You know, it's just crazy to see all these connections, which leads into uh, and hopefully maybe another podcast <laughs> <laughs> on comedy, comedy history. Um, so uh, in this in this uh, episode, there's a couple of errors and I'm pulling these from uh, fandom dot com. Um, oh, the, one of the errors that uh, it was uh, Joseph's shirt. Uh -huh. And that's one I picked up without even seeing that. Yeah. At one point, his shirt is like blue or something, and then it's yellow, or it's yellow, then it's blue. I can't remember. Or green. Right. It's like yellow and you know, green or something. You know what I didn't think about is, is I think I said something about uh, Hank's garage door, and this is when he's fixing it. I didn't realize that that's what that was until I just read this. This is He's fixing the garage door from when Dale wrecked the truck into it. 
Oh yeah, I didn't even pick up on that yeah, until I, I until we were talking about and that. That's when he was hitting the garage door yeah. thing. Put it yeah. back to its factory yeah. preset position. <laughs> yeah. So Bobby and Joseph are out there uh, helping him fix the garage, and like you said, uh, his shirt's yellow. But then when they go in, his his shirt goes back to green. Yeah. Um, Luann says Hoyt was arguing with Leanne, uh, meaning he was there. But in later episodes, he's in jail and has not seen Luann since they were young kids. And so that's one. And then there was another one that I remember too. So when Bobby's at bat, mm-hmm. he doesn't have a hat on. Right. And then the camera pans he's got a batting off of helmet. him, and then he goes back to him, and then he has a baseball cap. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? In the in the large scheme of things, that ain't bad. That's that's uh that's, that's not bad. No. And, and that's what Greg Daniels really does on this show. That uh, Fox Fox had asked for a show that doesn't have a lot of continuity. That way they could show stuff in syndication and you didn't have to watch the whole show to sure. know what was going on. Sure. But if you watch King of the Hill, there is a lot of plot development. There's a lot of character development. There's a lot of uh, emotional there, stuff that's not really supposed to be there per what there Fox really wanted. really is, yeah. But they were able to do it in such a, a, a clever way that it works. There's even cliffhangers later on. Oh yeah, cliffhanger you know? episode. Uh, uh, the, because like the one where she jumps out of the airplane and all that. You yeah, know, it's that like was, a two part. That yeah. was the end of a season thing, I believe. It was. And then when they it came was at back, the end of one season, yeah. she hits the ground and then boom, yeah. that's the end of the season. Yeah, and exactly. then they come back and then she's all yeah, you she's see in her a like, body Peggy's cast. dead. <laughs> what? I remember that. I remember in the newspapers and stuff. That's right. Peggy's dead Peggy's was dead. like a, a highlight that they used. <laughs> so uh, in this, we had uh, Mike Judge. He does uh, Hank Hill and Cotton Hill. We have uh, Kathy Najimy, who, of course, uh, people know from uh, Hocus, what, Hocus, Hocus Pocus, Pocus and, and numerous other numerous things. Numerous other stuff, yeah. Uh, Pam- uh, ho- uh, she was in Hocus Pocus, and uh, she was in Sister Act. Yes. Uh, Pamela Adlon, who uh, a great comedian uh, in her own right. Uh, she does Bobby Hill. Uh, Brittany Murphy, who has passed since, Rest in peace, yeah. Um, uh, did Luann. Those are your big ones. Uh, and then you start getting into uh, like Stephen Root doing Bill and and that sort of stuff. But those are your those are your main folks, and those are definitely the ones that are uh, referenced here on Fandom. Yeah, absolutely. So so the cool thing for me is is that before we start this, before we started the podcast, yeah. you had uh, an announcement. Boom! Oh well, King of the Hills back on uh, Adult Swim. Yeah. And then uh, I was scouring through Reddit AMAs. Well, there was a Reddit AMA with, I want to say it's Stephen Root, if I'm Mm -hmm. not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But there was an AMA with somebody, if it's not Stephen Root. And they were asking, uh, one of the questions that one of the Redditors asked was uh, about a development of a new revamped King of the Hill. Yeah. And this is March of 2021. So, yeah, we're uh, only a year, uh, less than a year out from March 2021 of the discussions of a new show and the excitement that came from whoever it was that was affiliated with the show that was doing the AMA, the excitement they showed in all caps. Uh, he said, Mike Judge and Greg might get pissed off at me, he said, but definitely it's in the it's in the pipeline. Yeah. So so what I've always heard um, is that Mike Judge is willing to do it, uh, but he wants all the characters at their current age. He wants to age everybody which is up. Fan friggin' tastic. Which is fantastic. It 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 does with Tom Petty be uh, you know, rest in peace, Tom Petty. With Tom Petty being yeah. passed and rest in peace, Brittany Murphy with her being gone. Yeah. Like how they handle certain characters would be interesting to see how they do. I mean, I think you could do it with different different people, but you know, because I mean think of all the people that have done Bugs Bunny's voice and all of that kind of thing. I mean, in animation, it's a little easier to replace characters like that. I agree. I agree that they, they that you could do that, but uh, you can't fool me. No, with Bugs no, Bunny. no. I get yeah, that. You, can't, yeah. you, you no. won't be able to fool. No, me. that's true. So I feel. I feel like uh, to keep it in the essence of everything that they they'll have to write them out. I mean, it's it's hard to, or or put them somewhere else to where they they don't pop up in the show physically you know yeah. they could be mentioned and discussed and talked about but to have somebody else do Lou Ann or Lucky's voice or hell even Buckley in the Sky's voice you know what I mean like just uh, just real quick let me give Stephen Root his uh, his his due okay um, he is one of my all time favorites um, as far as a comedian or an actor um, he he is a guy that every time he shows up he, he makes things better mm-hmm. uh, news radio 
Uh, he was the boss on news radio, which uh, I, I absolutely loved news radio. Um, when Phil Hartman died, it was one of the saddest things because Phil Hartman was such a great guy. Um, Funny never, guy. Never a bad thing said about him. Yeah, you know, no. And it was really, really sad that he passed. But, you know, Stephen Root has been uh, in things like uh, Finding Numo, Nemo. He was on Just Shoot Me. He was in Ice Age. Oh, he He's was on Just a, Shoot Me? Yeah, just one episode, but he was in that. Okay. Um, he was on Grounded for Life, which also was a very good show. It was a great show. Uh, he was in Dodgeball. Was he the, is, he, is Stephen Root the grandfather in in Grounded for Life, yeah, uh, not the t- grandfather. Who is Tony who? Bustamante? Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, and then he was in Dodgeball, which is a great movie. Uh, he was in Kim Possible, so he was a voice on Kim Possible. Oh, wow. Yeah, that goes back to some of the year stuff. Uh, West Wing, he was on that. Uh, he was uh, in. Uh, he's been on American Dad, which we won't we won't uh, uh, say anything about that. Well, that's funny about American Dad too, is because American Dad. The uh, one of the uh, top guys for American Dad is also a King of the Hill alumni. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's again, it's that intersecting. As far as an actor, he was in No Country for Old Men. He was in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Um, my absolute favorite. He was in Office Space. He is Milton from the Milton Shorts. Yeah, absolutely. He's the guy that wants the uh, that wants the red stapler. Yeah. Uh, he was in Drillbit Taylor, which a lot of people will remember. He was on the Sarah, Sarah Silverman show, Pushing Daisies, which was on. I don't know uh, what HBO, people would remember Drillbit Taylor, but yeah, well, I guess there's somebody know. out there that remembers it. <laughs> King of the Hill, of course. Twenty four. Uh, I'm just reading down his. Was it that here. Owens that was in that one of the Owens brothers? Uh, in what drill bit? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Batman animated series. He's been on Children's Hospital, which that's a whole thing in and of itself. Um, let's see what else we've got. Uh, The Good Wife. Um, oh, he's in a slew of stuff. I mean, good guy. He was on the Cleveland Show, also. By oh, the way, wow. the thing that well, ended so up was replacing Hank. King of the Hill. So was Hank. That's yeah. what's funny. Is yeah, you Hank said is you were going to Cleveland Show. Yeah. And then it, he he was a character on Boardwalk Empire, also, which wonderful show, great. Oh, that's show. the one with uh, Steve Buscemi, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, the yeah, Steve yeah. Buscemi show. Uh, that was really good. He was in Justified, which also was a very good show. Hot in Cleveland with uh, uh, Betty White and all that. Oh wow! Yeah, I mean the guy. It just goes on and on. Brooklyn Nine Nine, Big Bang Theory. I mean, this guy, workaholics, yeah, TV, Gravity Falls. Uh, I mean, this guy, he is he's a legend, honestly, for all the stuff that he's done. He's on Adventure Time, uh, Mr. <laughs> and he starts with King of the Hill, right? Mr. Pickles. Oh, he's Mr. He Pickles? Does a, he does a voice on Mr. Pickles. No, he's the uh, plantation owner. Oh, wow, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Pickles. Mr. Pickles. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, of course, I think the, the thing that uh, I've seen him the most in here lately uh, is Barry, a TV show on HBO, um, uh, where he is, he's, uh, Monroe, he's, he's kind of, uh, Barry's boss. Barry is a, a trained killer and he's Barry's boss. It's, it's a very good one. Uh, he's in man in the high castle, which also another Amazon show. He's on the, the it's a good new, book too. the new Perry, uh, new Perry Mason, uh, good God. I mean, I, I keep active. thinking, I keep thinking this thing's going to end. It just doesn't. No, he's active. So but he gets his start with King of the Hill, right? That's fantastic like where his whole guy. life starts. Man. Uh, or no, he honestly, he's, he's been in so much stuff. It's not even, even funny. Oh, that's yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Robocop three. <laughs> he's in Robocop three. Head of the class. Wow. How oh, far wow. does that go yeah, back? That's way back. Yeah. 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 I guess he is he's so, prolific as can be there. He, yeah. He's a very, he's so a, he was big before Mike judge called him. Very prolific guy. I don't know exactly where he's from uh i didn't read that part of the imdb but but uh uh he he is absolutely uh, one of my favorites there was somebody that had called to do dale gribble can't remember who it was now i wish i did right but i remember whoever it was was somebody that was a a bigger star and when they called him up he was way too expensive for him so here here's my goal with this show Uh right is number one and then i'm talking about this podcast number one we're going to get through every episode Every episode. Right. And we're going to break down each episode just like this and just talk about them. We are now at uh, minute uh, 57 for a uh, 22 minute show, <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I would love to hear from one of two people. Okay. Uh, well, three. I mean, Mike Judge would be the ultimate if we yeah, could get yeah, Mike absolutely. Judge on the phone. Uh, the other one would be Stephen Root, which that would be mind blowing for me because I have always been a fan. He's, he's just, he's the best. The third one, and maybe the one that's most obtainable, is Johnny Hardwick. 
Johnny Hardwick is the guy who did Dale Gribble, and he still does stuff on YouTube. So if you're listening, Johnny Hardwick, uh, which we will tag you in all this stuff. Tag you in everything. We can tag you on every bit. We would love to to talk to you just for five minutes, man. Just give us kind of your your recollection of King of the Hill, and maybe you can give us some some, uh, insight on maybe what's what's in the future. Well, also – a field trip to the college where mm. the, the archives are. I'm so still tell waiting. Them, tell them about that real quick. So there's a huge archive that Mike Judge dumped down in uh, San Marcos, Texas, I believe is where the college is. Uh, Texas State. Texas right? State, yeah. yeah. So uh, they have as much archival footage as anybody has. And it's not footage, it's, it's, it's scripts, it's, yeah. it's, pa- you know, it's, it's paperwork, it's sure. a lot of. Uh, sure. You know, liner notes, things like that, that they have uh, they have down there. So I'm going to try to get a hold of the college as soon as everything opens back up again in the new year. Because, yeah. you know, we're recording in, what is it, December 29th. So as soon as all the colleges are open back up in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to try to contact them. And uh, we maybe we can get down there and make a field trip, make a field trip. And uh, that would be freaking awesome. Go see what we can secure for season one. And y- then yeah. maybe do it season by season. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Go down there and collect what we need by season by season kind of yeah. thing. Cause they don't have information for every episode, I'm sure, but it would be cool to, you know, it should be cool to see what's there, see what they have. Yeah, and if we absolutely. can capture all the information we can capture for season one yeah. and just have that information to add to each episode, yeah. I think would be awesome. Yeah, It'd be awesome. So, um, okay. So just wrapping this thing up, um, my memories of King of the Hill, when it came on, I was uh, running an internet service provider here in town, and I remember the thing came on, and I I, I want to say it was like around Super Bowl time or something maybe when this first episode dropped, and I just remember watching it and thinking. Oh Actually, my. the Super Bowl that year was on the 26th of January. I looked okay. it up myself okay. because usually when they air a new show on Fox, they always do it right after the Super Bowl. Well, yeah, almost but all the networks do that. this one was around the Super Bowl, but yeah. it, was, it wasn't. Really. So I just remember when it came on uh, telling the guy that I worked with, I was like, holy crap, that show feels like it was written for us, yeah. you know, because it very much felt like um, people I knew, places I knew, situations I knew. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can absolutely, you know, I walked in on my dad one time and he was frying uh, sausage patties uh it, 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 in Greece. So like there yeah. was there was about an inch of grease there and so they were they were under the grease. Submerged. He was deep yeah. frying sausage patties. <laughs> yeah. That is that is not very far from a bacon sandwich with grease. No, it's not far, not yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean uh, you got your own grease that the sausage makes. And <laughs> That's then what you, I'm saying. And then you, you put a layer of Crisco in there and was, fried it up. Yeah, you're going to kill deep, yourself. Deep frying his sausage patties. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, uh, this, this show, you know, and, and the thing about King of the Hill is, is I had forgotten how much this show means to me. And then just as a lark, uh, kind of when you and I met, I, you know, because of your avatar that you use, which is Dale, um, I thought, well, you know, I'll give it a shot. I'll, I'll try rewatching King of the Hill. And I'm telling you, since I started that, I haven't stopped. Like I've gotten through the whole thing. But now I just kind of selectively pick and choose. It's become The Office. So The Office and King of the Hill are always on for me. For yeah, the most I, part. Uh, I acquired uh, all 13 episodes. So I'd have them. Seasons? Yeah. Or, uh, sorry, yeah. seasons. Yeah. I acquired all 13 seasons. So I have like. I like the word acquired. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice job, our Rusty. matey. <laughs> but uh, nice we, job, Rusty. Uh, yeah, I acquired <laughs> our, you know, some lumber. Well, <laughs> no, know. it makes it sound like maybe they weren't all bought. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sailing the high seas. So when this when this debuted, where were you? What uh, what, what uh, situation were you in? Nineteen ninety seven. Okay, so I moved here to Waco in ninety six from England. From England. From England. Yeah. So we touched down in 96. Uh, you were September. probably hyper aware of all of this, uh, like, like Texas stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I was really like, yeah. uh, well, I grew up with my dad, my dad's Texan. So right. when I, the first six years of life, I walked around, my dad had cowboy boots, cowboy hat. He was Tex. You know what I mean? He yep. was big Tex from the fair. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So in England, that that's what everybody knew him as was he was the big Texan guy. He was a big country guy. He was the uh, wild, you know, uh, 
my mom had to send my cousin to go collect him one time and he was at the grocery store and there's like 15 cops surrounding him <laughs> because they shut off one of the grocery lines while he was the store was busy and oh, they shut no. down one of the lines and he was like you know he started ranting and raving inside the store he said, tell me where a hammer yeah, is <laughs> tell me where a hammer is and uh so my first like really uh so it airs in january yeah. and uh I'm really big on TV at this point because I'm right. trying to understand a lot of the things that kids are interested sure. in that I sure. don't know. Yeah. So TV becomes a friend, whereas I don't have a lot of friends because I don't have a lot of yeah. relatable experiences to a lot of kids at this point because yeah. I grew up in a uh, in England. It was a, a neighborhood with 60 houses on one side of the street and 60 houses on the other side right. of the street. You could slap your neighbor's door. Right. So it was not that community. way here. And it's not. It was not like at all. I didn't feel like. It didn't feel as the community feel felt different. It was a community feel, yeah. but it was a different feeling yeah. as I could go down the street and I didn't I didn't have to have my mom holding my hand to go sure. knock on somebody's door or anything. Sure. I didn't have to go ask permission to go hang out five houses down. I just right. walked down there kind of thing. So it was this new dynamic for me. And TV is really where I learned a lot of that dynamic, like like American culture. So yeah. Uh, people think that moving from England to America is not a huge cultural shift, but mm. it is. It was a big cultural shift. I bet it is. It was a really big cultural shift, especially for a six-year-old. Yeah, no kidding. Because the cartoons are different than everybody likes. Mm. I like, you know, all these cartoons that these kids never even heard of and yeah. still to this day have never watched, don't understand none of it. Over there, thing, so. I don't know if people know, but over there you have uh, Thomas the Tank Engine and Static. Those are the two choices you had. Right? Uh, well, no, nah, <laughs> you would think so, but no, nah, we had like just, Thomas the Tank Engine. It's just there a was joke. Postman Pat, Fireman Sam. I mean, we had some good stuff. Yeah, there was actually some you. really, really weird, weird TV. They are like, a little weirder. If you pull yeah, some of the TV stuff. from like the 80s, yeah. like some of the puppet shows and stuff yeah. they had, some of them were really thrown off. Like uh, it kind of reminds me of the, 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 the Bananas in Pajamas or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like they had a lot of weird stuff like that that yeah. I remember as a kid. Teletubbies was not a stretch for you. No, Teletubbies was not a stretch. Yeah. Teletubbies was actually a fan favorite. Yeah. My, yeah. my little sister was, she was old. I wasn't old enough for Teletubbies, but I used to watch it with her and I was like, this is almost psychedelic to watch. Yeah, it know? was, it was, it was weird. The <laughs> yeah. sun smiling at you and stuff. All right, man. Well, we've got, uh, we got a lot of episodes to go, uh, but uh, this is going to be fun. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this adventure. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be each great. Time, each time we will uh, recap a King of the Hill episode. Next up is uh, episode two, season one. Square peg. Square peg. Yeah. All right, guys, y'all take it easy, and uh, you can find us at roguemedianetwork.com. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. <laughs>